Okay, uh, I'm just going to do a little training video for you, um, just to recap um, how we stabilise a side resting vehicle. Um, what we're going to look at is using the two stab fast method and we'll also use the three stab fast method. Uh, so you've got a little bit of an awareness and a recap um, on how to use both methods, depending on what station you're at and what kit you've got available. All of this, just bear in mind, it's very dynamic, so the situation you have operationally will dictate how and what we do with the stab fast and the blocks and wedges on the other side. What we're going to focus on today is the very basics of an ideal vehicle resting nicely on its side without much deformation uh, so we can get the principles correct and, and the rough idea of the sequence we should be doing things. So, depending on whether you're riding, how many numbers you're riding with and what crew you've got available. If you've got two people doing the stabilisation, ideally what you want to have is one person this side of the vehicle uh, start to set up staff fast while they're getting the staff fast out of the bag and looking at ideal locations for it. The second person will be on the other side of the vehicle uh, starting to pack underneath the A, B and C posts. Okay? Today we'll look at it as if you're riding with minimum crew, so you've only got one person at the moment stabilising the vehicle because everyone else is busy doing casual and carrying other tasks. So therefore I'll do everything myself uh, and that will just give you an idea. So for this I've already got the staff fast out for me for, for the sake of this video. But if it's a case of if you've already got it out of the appliance and placed it down in the bag uh, near where you're going to be using it, that's fine. If not, my first port of call will be to stabilise or put some sort of pack in on the other side of the vehicle. So we'll go around there first and have a look at that. So what we've done is we've got our blocks and wedges off the appliance. Um, have a look at the size of the vehicle, the archway of the roof, how much gap before you the gap you've got between the ground and the cantrail, because you might well decide step blocks work well under here. Um, as opposed to blocks and wedges. Again, it will be dependent on what you've got here and whether or not you've got any bodies or people protruding out of the lower windows. Okay. If you need to get rapid access to the vehicle, you've got no access, the first thing we'll be to do is get a step lock, something like that, place it in there underneath the B pillar. Okay, bear in mind, we're not jamming it into the casualty. So that we can initially get something in through the tailgate, lower something down through the top or form some sort of access. Because initially the car was really only going to run this way. So if we're getting something underneath there, we're putting it in uh, interim control measure while we're getting closer to the access. When that's there, we can get access and we can then be carrying on with the main part of the stabilisation. If we don't need rapid access and the case is okay, they're responding, maintain, managing their own airway, you haven't got any catastrophic bleeds or anything like that of concern. Then we can have good communication with them through the top of the front while we then stabilise the vehicle before we get access. Okay, again, that was something that you uh, consider and the dynamics of your incident. The key thing to bear in mind is if you are going to put people in, put something here as an initial control. Step lock's pretty good for that. Okay, now either method, whichever way you use, just a bit of supporting information for you. We need to pack underneath the A, B, and C pillars. If we're using the wedge with the stair fast, which we'll look at in a minute, then that will do the C pillar for you. If you're not using the wedge, or even if you are using the wedge, we need to pack the other pillars. The reason for this being is when we cut the C post, the B post, and the A, we know that when we're forcing that metal apart, once we overcome its tensile strength and we get that shear and the bang, all that force goes down through the vehicle. So from each pillar, okay, you've got you get that force coming through, get your pen sorted out, okay, it goes down through the vehicle all the way through. If we've got a casualty touching the top of the roof or the lower components, that force and vibration will just disperse through the vehicle and can potentially affect the casualty's condition or minorly depending on where they are. So the reason we block is firstly, that downward force, once we uh, get rid of that tensile strength, is dispersed down through the vehicle, down through there, and out through the blocks we've got under the A, B, and C post. They transfer that energy down into the ground. Secondly, what we'll find is that if you cut these top pillars, if you choose that technique, there is a potential for the cantrail at this end to drop because we're taking away structure and taking it across the hole at the top. So again, packing underneath there, we'll hold this. Uh, in place and stop it dropping and moving, especially if there's been some form of deformation to the vehicle. The third reason we put packing under the A, B, and C is because when we do the stab fast up, when we tension it, 
the stab fast will naturally want to push the vehicle in this direction, so towards us. Okay? So if the stab fast is trying to push the vehicle this way, if we've got no pack in here, if we just keep tensing the stab fast up, eventually you run the risk of pushing the vehicle over. So the idea is by packing underneath these posts here, when we tension up the stab fast, it should just the car shouldn't really move at all, it will just lock down onto our block towers. And that's what gives us a really robust, solid working platform. So that's the three reasons we do it. Just recap those quickly for you. Firstly, it disperses the cutting force when we send the pillars down through the blocks and into the ground. It takes away some of the energy away from the vehicle. It will stop the lower part of the vehicle dropping if it's lost any structural integrity when we cut the A, B and Cs. Lastly, it clamps the vehicle onto the blocks when we do up the fast. Okay, so what we want is really close block towers um, and it will lock the vehicle onto it. That's why we need to pack and block. However, every incident is different. You might not have the option of packing and block down there, so you'll need to do an assessment, weigh up your objectives and put controls in place depending on what you need to achieve. Again, remember, we need to make this a solid and stable working platform. So if you need to do alternative methods to achieve that and you achieve it, then we've also achieved the goal. Okay, so we're happy with that as well. What I'm going to do now is just going to pack underneath here so you've got a visual on roughly what we're looking for in the ideal situation. So a little bit of blocking, if we can, we could use a couple of wedges maybe. So underneath the bulkhead and the other Always remember to have a little bit of eye pro on when you're working around there because you've got all these contaminants that could be pinging off going in your face with your eyes. So a little bit of blocking just under where the bulkhead and the other kind of makes it's just got to be snug in there, that's fine. Something like that. When we pack underneath the beam, okay, if we've got a block tower, it says have a look underneath there, where is our beam pillar? Make sure we're not impinging on the casualty. It's not been unknown for medics to be getting airway management and access through here, so we don't want to block that view, so it can be quite a cramped area. So we have a look here, the block tower is correct. And what we're going to do is then just click out, slide it in nicely. Okay, so you can see what we've got here, most times we think that's suitable, okay? But if we can close this little bit of a gap, it means that when we tend to understand fast, the car won't be trying to close this gap. Okay, so ideally you want to pack that as well. So an option to do that will be to adjust the block. Okay, wedge on top, reposition. Okay, something like that. So we have closed the gap completely between ground and vehicle, if you can see that. Okay, that's roughly what we're looking for. What we don't want is these blocks right in underneath here, right in here on the beat. Because all that will do is if they're too far under, when we do up the stab fast, it will potentially cause the vehicle to rock over those blocks and it will have little effect in uh, aiding the stabilisation. So if we roughly visualise this, if we can, aim for something like that. Similar, but it's just to give you sort of a visual. Okay, then we move to the back, do the seat on that. So I could either swap out one of the front for a couple of these narrow ones, or just to use two narrow wedges gives you the same effect as a wide one. Again, here we've got where we've got a sort of a smaller pillar here, we're going to go against that one. Okay, where I've got a bit of a gap there, what we can do is then pack there. Again, as soon as we did earlier. Give it a pat. There we go. So stabilisation wise, something like that. The key thing is we're closing these gaps between the ground and the vehicle as we have done here. So as soon as I do up the stab fast, it will instantly lock down on these blocks and we get a much better, much quicker stabilisation effect. 
Okay, if you use your step blocks, things like that, take into account the height of this lip. Because what we don't want is one of the steps ending up here, because obviously it's long here, we're going to be wanting to flap the roof, isn't it? So we've got to make sure that whatever we put in place doesn't impinge the roof flap. Again, we can work around here now, minimum trip places up, we can work around here, look at get casual access, talk to them, etc. This is all nicely out of the way. Okay? So that's not the prescriptive, you must do it that way, because every situation is going to be different. But operationally, have roughly that picture in your mind, trying to achieve something of similar. Okay, and then hopefully you'll get a good stabilisation effect. So once I've done this side, already look, the car can't go, it's going to rock. So no matter what you do, it will still rock if I rock it now, but it can't come this way. So I've got the stabilisation in place here, we're happy it's nice and snug. I can now move around and do the stand faster. Okay, so when you are setting staff fast up, it can quite be a daunting task if you haven't had hands on for a long time. Some vehicles, the underside, we have quite lucky here today because there's loads of um, options for me to uh, secure the hook. Some vehicles, the whole base of the vehicle is covered in a big plastic um, protective shield, so then you might be limited to luxury of where you're going to put your hook. Again, can that plastic protection be removed easily? Can we get rid of it? If that's what we need to do to get an effective stabilisation, then perhaps that's what we need to do. Again, something you have to assess on the situation you've got. Take a little bit of time just to do a quick assessment from a distance to the underside of the vehicle. What I'm looking for is where do I want to put the heads of the staff fast. So underneath the seal lips, or this lip here is almost quite good, so it will hold it nicely in place. And I want it to be on a rigid part of the chassis. Okay? Okay, even if they're relatively close, it will still do the job. Some situations you might better put one stab fast dead central, and that might allow you to achieve what you've got if you're really struggling with anything anywhere else. And then again, look at the bottom there, because ideally we want to, uh, we want to get the ratchet strap at 90 degrees when it comes out the base. Okay, so if you look up here, you can see where we've got the ratchet at 90 degrees. Okay, just to give you a visual to have a look at. So we get that triangle effect, and then by what that does is the footprint, shall I say. That's the idea of that, where it increases the footprint of the vehicle by creating that triangle, which says what gives its rigid stabilisation, then disperses the force down through the, the stab fast strut. However, if you can't get all the way down here with your hook, you could hook in some way high like this it will still achieve the same effect. Your hook might not be dead in line with your strike, it could be slightly left or right, that's not a problem. If it's massively left or right, it could cause you an issue, because when you ratchet it up, it will pull the head of the staff fast left or right. So ideally, get it as in line as you can, or give it a few inches either side, it will still work. If you can see down here, you've got your suspension springs, Okay, never ever hook onto those. As enticing as it might be, don't hook onto them, because if that does become displaced, it will fire, it will come off with a lot of force, causing uh, potentially very serious injuries. So do not ever play around with these springs or hook onto them, okay? Plenty of options here. Also, again, think about, you know, fuel tanks, we don't want to go on that, plastic soft areas, that's not going to be any good. Uh, spare wheel, yeah, that might be quite solid, but quite often these become quite weak and rusted out. So again, do an assessment, have a look. When we're looking for our hook holes, plenty of them on this vehicle. I've got quite a lot of options here, so it's, it's made this video quite easy. Happy days. If you can't find the hook holes, I don't know if you can make out here. Sometimes you'll get these rubber gaskets, these little round gaskets. Sometimes they're a lot easier to spot than the older ones. Uh, and some up here look. On newer vehicles normally you can either push these in, so just soft rubber, you can push them in with your finger or poke them in with a screwdriver or in some cases you might better ping them out and there's just a big hole there. The idea of those is they're just access points where you unbolt things from inside the chassis and the seats and seat pans in the, in the inside of the vehicle. So again if you can see these, push these out and then you've got a beautiful hook. 
beautiful old oh, beautiful, it's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> Hold for your hook. Okay, so again, look for these and you don't get any of the obvious ones. Okay? So I'll just we'll set up the stand fast. We've got a block the other side, we're nice and happy with that. I'll just show you how I personally uh, operate the stand fast. Uh, however you do it will be obviously down to yourselves and personal uh, personal choice. Okay, so I've had a look at the underside of the vehicle. Okay, so I'm going to go at the front here. So for me here, what we're going to do is we're going to hook in high just to demonstrate to you that it still works if that's all you've got. Okay? Ideally, I'd want to put my head up here, strong point there, and I'll use this nice hole down there because that's really nice, a nice 90 degree angle nearly by going into the head up here. Okay? For the purposes of the demo though, we'll just come slightly right at that, we'll hook in high up here just so that you can see that it's still effective if that's the only option you've got. So when I'm doing the stand fast, I'll just stand this side of the what I normally do is quite a lot of times trying to position the stand fast, the face is moving around, we're trying to operate the ratchet handle, we're trying to get, you know, pull out some slack. So what I do is how we stow ours, we just put it underneath the spring. Either way, put it off the spring unit. If you've got the newer stand fast unit with the with the little screw gizzard to get the strap back on, that's, that's a newer model, happy days, you might not be able to do this option. So we put it down like that. Okay, fully undo the ratchet. Hopefully it's been sewn, the barrel is in line, so this is just free flow. Quite often you see people don't leave that free flow and then you've got all the issue and the, the friction trying to pull that through. So then, I'm in line, I keep my foot on the base, look, so now the base isn't going to go anywhere. This is your operating lever. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of how a stab fast works because we should know that. This is about how to stabilise a vehicle as opposed to operating the unit itself. If you want a video on the operating of it, let me know and we'll make one, but hopefully we should know that. So what we do is personally then I'll un unlock the, the device, I'll pull loads of slack through. It's always easier to go to full extension, knock it off, get that clip. It's easier to position like that. And it's better for me, if I need to lower it, it's easier to lower it and keep trying to extend it. So go for max extension first, have a look at our angles. So I can go in there. So what we're looking for is roughly between 35 55 degrees. Okay, so if you aim for 45 degrees on your strut, on your staff fast unit, you're not going to go wrong. If it's too high like this, your car will just push it over if it does get any sudden movement this way. If it's too shallow and it moves, the face will just slide out. Okay? So you aim for 45 degrees. Even then, if you think, ah, oh, that's still a bit high, I can either drop it down a little bit. Okay, I'll be happy with that. Well, there's nothing to say you can't shorten it and go in here or somewhere lower. It will still work if the strike is shorter. Okay? So I'll keep my foot on it. I'm happy with my head there. If I can't get my head up onto that sill there because the angle's a bit steep, then I'll just go down here. As long as I'm happy it's on a strong component, that's fine. Okay, so then what I could do then, my foot's still holding the base so this thing doesn't wobble or fall anywhere, and place me hook into there. Okay. I can then pull my slack through. Okay, and at this stage, all I'm going to do is just hit it a tiny bit so that that will stay there on its own. Okay? We do not want to tension up the ratchets fully yet until we've got the second one in place and then we get some of the sight of the vehicle. So there we go. Nice. Now, just something to bear in mind this heat, this sleeve here, red sleeve. All this sleeve is for is sharp objects, okay? Historically, we've always been, yeah, if there's any hot edges, exhaust, things like that, that's what this sheath is for. It's not for hot surfaces. It's purely for sharp edges, okay? To protect the ratchet strap. If it's going over a catalytic converter or anything hot, then you need to get something else in between the strap and the hot surface to protect it. So either something, ahead, uh, something ideal from the vehicle or suitable sharps or hard protection from us, uh, the appliance to go in between the strap and the hot object, okay? This is sharp objects only, 
Okay? Good. We're happy with that. It's all nice and tidy. So then we come in with a second stamp cast. Well, I am looking under the side of the vehicle. We'll go in a little bit lower here. Okay, so again, I'll take this off for there so it just free flows nicely. Okay, so again, it's all about your stowage, so it operates the we haven't got things working against us. Pull some snack through, undo the locking mechanism. Then so let it actually get it clicked and that locks back in. I then position my head. Okay, it's not a bad angle, but just to show you now, if I think, oh, actually, I perhaps I'd like to go under this lip here. I'm thinking that would do a better job. Remember, if you're questioning it, then perhaps that's a sign for you to think it's not right. So if you're questioning it, readjust. It's easier for me now to lower this than it is to keep extending it. Okay, you've got your cable in there. If you go into there like that, it might lock on the cable. Just to give an example, I'm just showing you how it's easier to lower it. We can do it at different angles. I'll keep my foot on there. Nice hook on like so. Try and get it as straight as we can. Okay, that's good. I'll tension that up. Okay, so we've got, they're not mirrored, but they're doing exactly the same job, because you're not always going to be able to mirror them. It depends on the components and the underside of the vehicle and what you've got available. Before we tension these up, I will now want to shout that the other officer in charge or whoever's managing this rescue, let them know we're ready to tension up the ratchets. Ideally then we want to get someone just to sight the end of the vehicle. Doesn't matter which end you do it from, we give them the thumbs up, ratchet them up. The, pe the people doing the ratcheting, they're not waiting for me to say stop. They will just keep ratcheting until they are happy that these are secure enough and all this needs to be it's a bit like a bungee cord tour, elastic band tour, I'll show you that in a minute. If they get to that stage and they're happy, they just stop, let the OIC know, boss, vehicle stable. And that's it, job done. All I'm doing here, or whoever you did get to do it for you, because we know the staff fast to push the vehicle over, I'm just watching the vehicle, so as soon as I see any movement this way, I give it a rest, and they talk like that's it, vehicle stable. Because if we start to push the vehicle over, means we're over tension in the ratchet straps or our blocks and wedges on the A, B and C pillars haven't been done effectively and need addressing. Okay? Remember, if we've got casualties coming out the window down there, things like that, last thing you want to do is a car that we start to move on to them, potentially pinning them. Okay, so it's overall, that's what that job's for. So what I mean, I could still be doing this on my own if, if needs be, for short personnel. It's not a problem now, I'll just do one before the other. That's as tall as it needs to be. Same on this one. Okay, bungee taut. If we look now, look. Oh, I'm pretty strong, isn't it? We can look there, though. Solid platform. Okay, if we look around the other side. Okay, we can see there naturally, you can see the blocks are loaded. What a dull thud. You know, as you can see the load, they've instantly locked onto the blocks. That's not going anywhere. Okay? Naturally, when we're training, we always do this, don't we? To check the vehicle stable in training. Oh, yeah, good effort, that's, that's nice and stabilised. Operationally, we don't do any of this. Okay? We don't be rocking anything to check the stabilisation. If it's effective here, and we've tensing up the ratchet straps like we have so that the bungee tour, that is it's stable. We should not be doing this because if you are quite strong, um, or just put a bit of force in, you'll always move the vehicle if you rock it, no matter what you put in place. Okay, so we don't be doing that, I'm just doing it just to give you that training thing of that you can see it stable. Okay, that's it. If we just quickly look back around here again. Another key thing that we keep missing, okay, is we leave the ratchet handles up like this. Okay, you can see the difference. Ratchet handles need to be in the fully locked down position to be safe. So always, the final bit is locked down nice and flat, that is now safe, nothing can come accidentally undone. 
Okay? Then it's all nicely done, and obviously as when we're doing things around the vehicle, we'll just give it, if we need to take stabilisation, we can just gently pull the head and twang that. If it's like that, that's fine. We don't need to give it a big shake. So if I was to give that a big lot of force, depending on what it's against, it might just slide off. Okay? If we are, check it. If not, just give it one crank. That's, that's it. Okay, but again, don't get over cranking it every time we check it, because I always will just eventually start putting a lot of force that way on the vehicle. Okay, I hope you found that useful. What we'll do is now, we'll just have a breather and then we'll look at the uh, using the freestyle fast one on the front. Okay, brilliant. What we're doing now then, we're using the three staff fast setup. We've left the front one in situ, okay? The principles of what we've already looked at are the same, except instead of putting blocks and wedges under the C pillar, we'll use the wedge system that comes with staff fast. Okay, by now you should know what you're doing with staff fast, you should know how it operates. I'm hoping that you should know how to put the wedge uh, onto your stand fast unit. There are slight variations in that. You've got them on station. If you're not sure, get out there, have a look, or ask a member of your crew how it works. Hopefully, we're not at that stage. Okay, we've already put this in place. So it's simply looking at the structural components. We've got part of the chassis over the head. Down here, the ratchet strap was going over the exhaust. So I've put a wedge in there, and we've ratcheted it over the wedge to protect the strap from touching the hot exhaust. Okay, as you can just see here. It's not amazing, it's not ideal, but obviously using the wedge does come with its problems, i.e. I need to be able to slide the ratchet strap here, it needs to come under the vehicle enough so that the whole lot is ideally in line. And you can obviously see some vehicles there's not going to be a lot under here to place the head. I don't have the option of bringing the whole thing over here because I can't drag that ratchet all the way over here. So there's pros and cons to using this. Um, Staff fast market it using the kit of three, they sell the kit of three, that's how they use it. One there, one there, one there, one on the bonnet using the wedge. From my experience, I find that using two and just using blocks and wedges under the ABC is a lot quicker than trying to attach the wedge and find a suitable position to put it. That said, I have used the wedge in training where it's worked on some vehicles excellently. So don't discount it, it could be that one option you need for certain incidents. If you favour the three system, then use the, use the, the three staff file system. Um, but don't over engineer it, don't jeopardise rescue time uh, by messing around trying to get the wedge in and get it all lined up. Okay, so we'll have a look around here that you can see. You can see we've got the wedge in. It's partly under the back of the um, just to rear the C pillar, but we're on a good, good part of the, uh, the wing here, so we've got a lot of stability. You can adjust the wedge, we've got it on the higher adjustment, that's pulled in nice and snug. You can see there, you need to get it in line, so that is doing what lots of wedges would do here. Albeit, if we're not close to the C pillar, we're still going to get that little bit of downward force that we talked about earlier. Okay, so it all depends on how far you can get that wedge under to keep it in line with your staff fast strap. Okay, if you're not sure about that, someone have a look out on the station, okay, but it's quite a simple bit of kit. Okay, so that is how you use it with the wedge and stab fast. You can do the three stab fast system with blocks under the A, B and C and still put one under the bonnet. That will still work and that will give you an even more solid platform. Sometimes you might not have the option to go on the underside of the front, you can go diagonally, so one under the rear like we have done, and one staff fast on the bonnet also creates a very stable platform. Okay, so you've got a few options you can use it with. What we're going to look at in front here. Another thing you need to bear in mind uh, is if you're going to put a staff fast on the front of the vehicle here, is it creating more of a trip hazard because it's potentially going to be our main scene of operations? If I'm putting a staff fast strut down here, does it now hinder? Casually access in through the windshield because I didn't want to get rid of all of this, so I've got really good front assessment and hands on on the casual. We do lower limb assessments, uh, change over on the head if we need to be, no, need to. Also, this can possibly be a viable uh, rapid extrication boot. Okay, so if you've got limited access out the back because the seats aren't reclining or the type of makeup of the vehicle, you might decide to remove the windshield, relocate the roof a bit, or that might give you enough space to actually longboard them out the front there. So what you don't want is then to have a staff fast strut here hindering all of that egress route. 
just something to bear in mind. So, we've got a couple of options. The easiest option, I like to get on this vehicle, you can see where the bonnet and the wing have been cropped in by damage. I can just hook directly onto the bonnet. As long as I can feel that thing, yeah, that's nice and secure, it's not going to pop open. I can just hook under there. If it's a metal framed body, I might be lucky enough to get the hook under and hook under the wheel arch, depending on the shape of the vehicle. So again, if there's easier options and quicker options that still allow us to achieve the goal, let's use them. Because again, we all know using the hook knife, sometimes it works really well, other times it can be pretty difficult to get uh, a puncture through if the bonnet's quite thick or a different configuration. A hook knife, uh, We'll use it now just so you can see it. Okay, the idea is you've got the beak cover, you open it up, it takes the cover off it, you've got your beak. Okay, this needs to be kept in good nick and sharp. If the point of this starts to blunt over and go blunt, that's where you get your problems puncturing through to make your hole. Okay, when we've made a hole, we don't put the beak in there and start leaving it around to make the hole bigger. This is literally just to shear through the metal to make that slot. We then use the hooked end to open up the hole to put the stab fast hook in. That's what it's for. Okay, so we'll make a hole now. When you're using it, it requires a little bit, it's a little bit of a technique to get it, but we're sort of forcing the, the, the tool that way whilst we're trying to lever it to get it to bed in. So again, depending on the situation, some don't like it because if we're putting enough force here, we could be moving the vehicle slightly. Okay, but again, it's one of these things you need to practice and train with. You can make holes in cars anywhere. Uh, just get some hands on with it. So we'll make, we'll make a hole now, just to show you that it does work. Okay, so again, where we can, just try and go as low as possible, okay, into the vehicle, so we can get that 90 degrees with the ratchet strap. Okay, so we'll do a little bit of force. Okay, so I'm forcing it that way and in to get it right, and go all the way in, all the way back. Okay, that's all we use out. We don't want that in there and leave it and all this stuff because you'll damage this. If you damage that, you won't make your hole. Close it up, keep it safe. Okay, and then all we use is this bit here now. We just push it into there. We use that just to open it up like so. Okay, and that's the hook knife, that's all it's for. Then all we need to do then is come in for your staff off again, do an assessment where we're placing it. I did in line with making the hole. So again, let this one hasn't been stowed in line. Put some slack through. Lock it off. Position the head, nice angle there. We can then come in. So remember what we talked about earlier, I could go directly under here, look. It's already there for me. Okay, but all we've done, we've done a little hook hole as well. Okay, so there we go, we need to just leave it out a little bit. So there you go, you need to get a good... There we go, look. So again, it's not a problem if that happens, just keep your tools at hand if you need to make it a little bit bigger, no issues with that. Okay, so again, you can see it's pulling the bonnet out, because obviously the bonnet's only able to hold in by a light bracket, look. So again, don't overly tension it. Bungee tall, it's not moving anywhere. And we cut it out solid. Okay, remember we don't do that operationally. Okay, so there you go. Remember, lock your ratchet handle off. The only downside of this, if I'm trying to work in here, I'm now falling over and having to work around the staff fast. If you're trying to longboard someone out, it's potentially not an option now because this is in the way. Okay, but depending on what your plan is, depending on what you're used to using, two staff fast set up or three, both very effective. Just bear in mind, don't waste time trying to use something that we don't need. If two will do it, it's a box of wedges happy days. If you're very effective with the three setup, use the three setup, but bear in mind that we need all three, is it going to hinder access, etc. Okay, 
Hope you found that useful. If you want to see any more on Staff Ask, just give me an email, give me a ring. Hey, Paul. See you next time.